the word of God for advancement. Hallelujah. I see you advance in Jesus' name. I hear the Holy Ghost say, it is time for my people to laugh at the face of the enemy. Hallelujah. I see restoration come to you. Grace is given to you at this hour. Hallelujah. You are rising in the strength of God, in the ability of God, and in the grace of God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Can you give the Lord a shout in the house? Amen. Amen. Our viewers online, our family online, it gladdens my heart once again to be in your space. Amen. And I know in this year, 2023, the Lord is going to be working amazing wonders in your life. I want you to believe it. Because the man of God, Reverend Dr. Ife Ubuki, will be continuing a series he started entitled Fresh Oil. And this is the third part in the sequel. You know one thing about life is this. You cannot come into something that you haven't seen. That's how it functions. You must see it before you can come into it. And one of the functionalities of oil is the ability to give sight. So as you listen to this amazing man of God, he's going to be opening your eyes into insights about the oil. So journey with him and I know your life will be better because you listen to this broadcast in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to be a conduit of blessing. After watching the message, I want you to like it and I want you to share it. Share it to people who you believe need to see these things. Because I believe one thing that's going to happen as people watch this broadcast is scales are beginning to fall off their eyes and they're going to see how they ought to see in the days we are in. Praise the Lord. Brethren in the house, can you be on your feet standing? I just want us to make some prayers. Make some prayers. Ask for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of God. Let our eyes be opened that we may see as we ought to see. Open my eyes, O oh God. Open my eyes. Let fresh oil come upon me, Lord, that I may see as I ought to see, Father King of Glory. Are we not groping in darkness in 2023? I will not grope in darkness. In 2023. I will not grope in darkness. Let the light of God shine on my path. Let the oil of God come upon my head in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Because it's such a privilege again to be in your presence. Father, as we come, oh God, let our eyes be open. Let fresh oil come, Father. And the one who's watching, Father, King of Glory, let eye salve be given to that eye that truly the eye may see as we ought to see in Jesus' mighty name. If you are victorious, shout aloud, amen. amen. Can we just make welcome with a rounded clap of ovation the amazing Numa praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. hallelujah hallelujah oh give god praise Let's just give him praise give him praise oh hallelujah Amen. we submit to the holy ghost
spirits. We surrender to your fire. We surrender to your leadership. We surrender to your working. Hey, lead us and we follow, Master. Lead us, Holy Ghost, and we follow. Thank you for altering everything, propelling everything, organizing everything, and arranging everything. Yeah, yes, yes, yes to the Holy Ghost. Yes to the Holy Ghost. We worship you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We surrender to your leading completely. Yes, we know we can walk without you successfully. So we submit to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just wave your hands to him as you take your seats. We give you praise. You may be seated. Hallelujah. What a day to be alive to celebrate Jesus. Thank God for his mercies. One thing that delights me is that every time God's word is coming, Babu says that his word is a light to us. God is charting new terrains for us every time he brings his word to us. And in this season, we have begun to consider fresh oil. And uh, it is so critical to develop this understanding because of how relevant it is to us today. Now, going again to our text in Matthew 25, from verse 1, there Jesus, when he began to teach, he said, Look, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. So, this is about the kingdom of heaven, the way it operates, the technology of the kingdom. And uh, it says, It is likened unto ten virgins. What did they do? The Bible says in that verse that they took their lambs and they went forth to meet the bridegroom. So he's defining the age in question here. This is a generation that are prepared to meet the bridegroom. Jesus left and said he's coming back again. And the season will come. There will be a generation upon this earth that will herald the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The events of our world today show clearly that the master's return is imminent. And any day that can happen, and so that is why being alive today, we need to master and study this technology. Because Jesus is teaching about the, 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 the virgins that came together to meet the bridegroom. And so as we read on in verse 2 of that text, it says that these virgins, five of them were wise and five were foolish. And in verse 3, he begins to tell us what brought about foolishness. He says in verse 3 that... Um, they that were foolish what they did was that they took their lambs but failed to take oil so here we see that in this age we need oil and it is our responsibility to have oil I defined oil in our earlier message that the oil there is symbolic of the Holy Spirit his ministry, his work in our lives. So we're talking about the presence, the activated presence of the Holy Spirit in us, bringing direction to our lives. That is what the oil represents. So, let's look at this critically. Now, oil by itself is of no value if all you have is oil in this context. When Jesus here is talking about us having oil, he put so much importance to it. In fact, he says, the virgins that failed to go for oil are foolish. They are foolish. And I shared with you that in the book of Ecclesiastes, the Bible says, don't be foolish and die before your time. So a man without oil is exposed. And we need to have oil in our vessels. So Jesus says, the foolish took no oil. Now, oil by itself is of no value. The purpose of the oil is so that you can have light. That is why Bible talks about the foolish virgins and the wise virgins taking lambs. So it is a system. The lambs with the oil are coming together to establish light. Now, light itself is not the end of this matter. The purpose of light is so that you can see. 
Because if you are not seen, even if there's light present, it's useless. The purpose of light is an enablement for us to see. So when Jesus says, go get oil, the oil itself is not the end of the process. The oil is to ensure that you have light. Now, light in itself is not the end product. The end product is so that you can see. We, we need light so that we can see. So the focus here is of being able to see. Light from the oil. Now, let's see the book of Job 29. Let me establish this. Job, in that place, tells us verse 2. He begins to lament. If you know the story of Job very well, Job was somebody who, who was quite wealthy, influential. He was easily a reference point. Now, when we read about his life, tragedy came knocking, and it knocked him down. He lost his wife, lost his children, lost his business. He lost his position. He lost his influence. He became, he became ill, gravely ill. And he was pushed to a point where people began to press him to even depart from righteousness. So here, Job is reflecting on his life. And he goes into the, into the journey of where he's coming from. Look at what he says. He says, oh, that I wear as months past. Because they were glorious. He was influential. He had resources. In fact, he was the wealthiest man in the east. Oh, that I wear as in months past, as in the days in which God preserved me. He knew that the hand of God was upon his life, and that's what gave him everything that he had. And so he continues verse 3 by saying this. Because in talking about God preserving him, about all that he accomplished, is telling us exactly how that happened. And so verse 3 says, he says, when his candle shined upon my head, and when by his light I walked through darkness. So Job was not a man that darkness did not come towards. Darkness came. See, we need to understand that, look, our world is dark. There are evil spirits. They will always come in different ways. So it's not about they are not being there that we're talking about here. They will always be there. But it's what you have that makes the difference. So Job says, no matter what was around me, the darkness, I walked through them. And how did he do that? By light that was upon him. So light is critical. It's the key for us today. If we walk in, we'll always come out triumphant. Always come out triumphant. Now, one of the fascinating figures that I read about often and I reflect on his life is Samson. Samson was an enigma. An amazing man of God. Somebody God gave a rare and unusual anointing. In fact, outside him, there's no documentation of any other person who had that kind of God's power in his life. So Samson was unusual. Now, when we look at his life and look at his strength and all that he did, certain facts begin to stand out. The enemy that he had at that time, the Philistines, they were troubled by his power. And they had no antidote to who Samson was. Now, let's see the book of uh, Judges, chapter, chapter 16, verse 28. Now, eventually, the Philistines captured Samson. And uh, here, we're looking at the restoration phase of Samson. He says here, that Samson called unto the Lord and said, O oh Lord God, remember me. This is a man who had fallen. He had been an invincible man, unusual strength, but was captured by the Philistines. He was imprisoned and made to push that grinding stone. Now, here he's praying to God, calling out, Lord, I'm in this low place. I'm in this place where it looks like I'm forgotten, no longer celebrated. I'd like you to look carefully at his prayer. And Babu says, remember me, I praise thee. And strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once. In other words, I'm ready to die, but I don't want to leave this world without accomplishing something. If I stop reading at this point in time, our minds will travel and think that something is praying that God will give him power again so that the enemy can be defeated. 
so that they will know that Jehovah reigns in Israel. As far as I'm concerned, that should have been the prayer that Samson is praying. But when we look at this place critically, what does Samson pray? He says, I pray thee, O God, strengthen me this once, O God. And he says that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines. And amazingly, he says, for my two eyes, of all the things to be avenged of, two eyes, is that the most important thing? Why is Samson particular by his eyes? You see, the enemy, when they captured Samson, the first thing they did was not to look at his hair. The first thing they did was that they went for his eyes. Because they know, they understand spiritual things. That if you take a man's eyes, you've eliminated that particular man. Eyes are important. You must see. The reason for oil is so that we can see. The reason for the light that we come because of the oil is to enable us to see. When you take the sight of a man, you have captured that particular man. And Samson understood that. And he says, God, they took the most valuable thing from me. Not my hair. Not my ministry. They took my eyes. A man that can see cannot be conquered. A man that can see can never be quenched. A man that can see will always rise in life. Two facts I want to show you here. Number one, you control a man's life to the extent you control his sight. I say that again. You control a man's life to the extent that you control his sight. Number two fact, Satan cannot dominate you until he controls your sight. And that is why we need to understand that Oil is given to us to generate light. And light is given to us so that we can see. I want us to see the book of Genesis chapter 3 and um, verse 6. God created man. Unfortunately, man lost his position. And uh, we're reading about the impact of his disobedience. Now, the Bible says here that when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes. Look at it again, what she sees. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. Bible says she took the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also to her husband with her and they did eat. This is the act of disobedience. They are violating the commandment of God. And this is the moment. They ate that fruit. They looked at it, they desired it, and then they ate that fruit. Now, watch very carefully. Because from this point, the life of Adam completely changed. From this point. And I want us to investigate very clearly how this change came. Now look at the next verse, verse 7. As we read on. The first impact of disobedience, of what they ate. Babu says, the eyes of both of them were opened. The first thing that was attacked. By the act of eating that fruit, by Adam and Eve, was the eyes of Adam and Eve. The eyes of both were open. Now we need to understand that. Because you and I know that God did not create Adam blind. So we need to read this carefully. You know, uh, to understand what is happening here, I'd like you to look at uh, the mirror concept, for example, where... If you put number nine, if you hold number nine, the letter nine, and place it in front of the mirror, what do you see? You see a six. Now, you know the reality that what you have is a nine. But what you will see in the mirror is a six. And that is different from what you are holding. So you hear there's a reversal. There's a flip side. So when the Bible is saying that the eyes of them both were opened, what the Bible is actually saying is that they became blind. Because there are two dimensions in life. Adam did not know fear. He was never a coward. He never knew sickness. He never knew failure. He was blind to all of that. But when he sinned here, the Bible says that his eyes were open because he was not open to defeat. He was open to all the things that we see today. And in reality, he became blind to his spiritual position. 
So when Bible says the eyes of them both were opened, they were actually becoming blind to what really matters. So the first thing that happened to man when he sinned, the first place attacked by the sin were the eyes of these two people. I'd like you to know that sight is important. And uh, Jesus says that a person who will not secure the means to ensure they have sight is foolish. That's what he's really saying. It's foolish. In um, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4, the Bible says that Satan's activity in the world is such that, it says in verse 4, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So we see here that Satan controls people by blinding them. If you don't see, no matter how zealous you are, how much you fast and pray, what kind of church you go to, at the end of the day, your life will be inconsequential. Satan will blind the minds of those that believe not. That is how he gains access into their lives. So, it's important that we understand the power of the oil. The oil is our means in the kingdom of securing our sight. Because it will bring light. And through that light, we'll begin to see. The psalmist prayed. He said that we will see light in your light. And that's what we're talking about here today. Amazing. Amazing. As God began to deal with Abraham in the Bible, in Genesis chapter 13, uh, God spoke to him in verse 14 and says, Look, Abraham, Abraham, he says, after the Lord was separated from him, I read that again, and the Lord said to Abraham, after the Lord was separated from him, he says, lift up now your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward and southward and eastward and westward. Look around you. Open your eyes. Look around you. You need to see. And he says in verse 15, as we read on, for all the land which thou seest, to thee I will give it and to thy seed forever. Whatever his children we have, whatever he will come into, will be determined and limited by whatever he's able to see. Light is critical. We must see. Our eyes must come alive again. And how will that happen? Only when the light of God comes. How will light come? It will come by the oil. Fresh oil in our vessels guarantee that we are able to see. And as far as we see, westward, eastward, northward, southward, will determine what God can give to us. Many years ago, I was praying for God to change his situation in my life. I kept praying. I prayed for two years. And I was getting no closer to seeing any change. And I remember vividly this night, I began to cry to God. I said, God, what's going on? Why are you not listening to my prayers? I've been praying for two years. I'm not seeing any answers. Have I offended you? Why are you not listening to me? I kept asking God. And I remember that night, God spoke to me and said, yes, you claim to be praying. But in your heart, you don't see the answer to what you're praying about. And I was shocked. And I said, Lord, are you saying the reason why I haven't seen change is because of how I'm seeing this situation? He said, yes. Because inside of you, what you see is the opposite. And as long as that is what you see, I can never move to bring any change. What you see will limit what I can do. And that's exactly what God is telling Abraham here. Abraham, lift up your eyes. You need to look away from what men see and come into the frequency by the oil to begin to look properly. And if you can see in that dimension, he says, I will give it to you. Nothing can restrain it. And that is important. So, God has set up for us a system we can activate, a system that brings sight. It involves the lamp and the oil at work. Matthew chapter 27, in that account, Jesus says that the virgins took, they took oil. Those who were wise, they took oil and they all took their lamps. So the lamps, the oil, make up a system that would generate light. Verse 7 of Matthew 25, as we go back to that account, uh, Verse 7 of 8, as Jesus continued to teach about the kingdom, he now says that at the critical time of the expectation that the virgins had, Bible says that they all rose and trimmed their lamps. So the lamps don't give light automatically. They have to be trimmed. 
I know these days, in our world today, we don't use these kind of lamps, and many people are not familiar with them. But the way they work, these lamps have uh, um, uh, inside them something known as a wick. And uh, it is from that wick that light will be generated when the wick is dipped inside oil. Now, the way it happens, when this system is engaged, the wick accumulates ash. And when it does, it will not burn brightly. So when the Bible says that they trimmed their lambs, what they really did was that they took that wick and they cut off the edges that will not burn properly. The things that are unwanted, the things that will compete in the production of light, they had to cut them off so that the wick is fresh and be able to generate full capacity light. Now, any believer that wants to engage the system of God, we must ensure that there's a supply of the Spirit. And one way to guarantee that is to constantly pray in the Spirit. Always pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in other tongues. It's one way of activating the supply of the Spirit of God in your life. And not only that, like I said, the week is trimmed of things that are unwanted. So the same way, you must trim of the things that the flesh will bring into your life. Because the flesh, the Bible says, was against the spirit. And that has to be trimmed. People of God, for us to reign in this age, we must have fresh oil in our vessels. And I trust God that in this season, God is pouring fresh oil upon your life. The virgins that are wise, they took into their vessels fresh oil. I'd like you to pray right now, wherever you are, and tell God, Father, I want your spirit in my life like never before. Fill me afresh. Let me overflow with your presence. I want my light to burn bright. Open my eyes to see. Help me to realize and recognize what the kingdom is doing and saying. Thank you, Father. Such a precious moment. I pray for everyone who has heard this message today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Flood their hearts with light. Fill them with your spirit, O oh God. Let the heaven resonate in their hearts again, I pray. In the name of Jesus, oh God. The Lord tunes you to a new frequency. Frequency of victory in Jesus' name. Well, it is clear that God's work in our lives is hinged on the supply of oil. But see, a man cannot come into that if he's not born again. If he doesn't know Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Perhaps in your life, you have never really consciously made that decision. To enthrone Christ in your life. I want to pray for you right now. It's the opportunity. Pray with me and say these words. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, I come repenting. I come declaring Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Make me your child today, Father, and forgive me of every wrong I've ever done. I want to serve you genuinely. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I rejoice with you if you pray that prayer because something glorious has begun in your life and the Lord fill you with his oil in Jesus name well God's word has come to us we will not be foolish we'll be wise securing oil in our vessels praying in the spirit and staying strong I want to invite you look at the address on your screen right now and I want to invite you to join us in our Sunday service God is doing amazing things at the Glory Pavilion Church and uh, I'd like you to come let's encounter God together and bask in his presence i see you when you come. God bless you in Jesus' name. Well, before I go today, I want to pray for everyone who's given an offering, you've given a seed, you paid your tithes, whatever you've done. I want God to bless you today. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone who has sown a seed, who has given an offering. I bless your life in the name of Jesus. I command that you begin to shine bright, that the heavens give rain to your life. I command that you flourish. The Lord today surround you with favor in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Remember, until the enemy controls your sight, he can never dominate your life. You are a champion. You are born to be one. Stay strong and have fresh oil in your vessel. God bless you.